All right guys, in today's video, I am just doing a quick, and by quick, I mean this video wound up being almost 20 minutes long, sorry, um, video on YNAB's new loan management feature, debt payment feature, loan payment feature. I can't remember what they called it, but anyways, I've had a lot of questions lately on different aspects of it and how to use it. So I go over the web app and the mobile app. Um, I will put timestamps down below. And if you guys still have any questions, you can go ahead and follow us on Instagram. It's linked down in the description. Feel free to shoot me a DM and I am happy to try and help the best I can. Hello and welcome back. It is too early on a Tuesday morning and I'm having a bad hair day, so you're welcome. Also, the uh, the battery in the camera is dead and I need my phone for this video and Cody's gone, so we are recording with the FaceTime camera. I do apologize. It is what it is. So today I want to go over YNAB's new, um, I think they're calling it the loan management feature. To me, I called it the debt payoff feature. You can call it what you want, but it's new. It's exciting. I think it's an amazing tool. I think a lot of people are still a little confused on how to use it. I've had a few days now to play around with it, um, and I've had some questions come up over the last little bit here as well. Um, if you don't follow us on Instagram, you can go ahead and follow us. The link is down below. Um, I had put up on there that if anybody was having any difficulty with the new feature or with YNAB in general, to just shoot me a DM and I would do my best to answer it. Um, and there's been quite a few questions come up about how to use the software. So I'm going to go through some of it. So if you're not new to YNAB, you'll know that typically our accounts would show up under tracking. This whole loans option is, is new. This is what YNAB has added in. Um, Previously, it was only our budget accounts and our tracking accounts. Um, so I'm going to open up a tracking account just as an example here. Um, and now it appears at the very bottom under tracking accounts. And we'll say that we had a student loan. And we'll say the current balance is $12,000. Right, so if you had a loan, um, it would show up under tracking. Right, so down here we have a loan and it says $12,000. So now it'll say new, your payments, uh, plan your payments and track your progress, turn it into a loan account. So you would go to learn more and get started. And actually maybe what I'll do is I'm just gonna add in some transactions here just so that you guys can see. We'll go back to September 1st and we'll say it was a um, loan payment and we paid $200. See if it had another one. I'm just doing this so that we have a bit of history to go off of in the account so you guys can see how um, this would change. Okay, so we had a balance that started at twelve thousand um, dollars. <laughs> I've done these wrong. I'm having a blonde moment here. Payments, these would be inflows to this account. Bear with me, guys. Okay, so we started with a balance of 12,000, and this should be the month prior. Okay, so we started off with 12 grand owing, we're paying $200 a month, our balance is now 11,400. So we're gonna go ahead and convert this into a loan account. So we'll set up account. It's a student loan, give it a nickname, current interest rate will say it's 5%, monthly payment required by the lender is 200, hit next, and then it'll ask what um, category you wanna take it out of. Now, we don't actually have a student loan, we just have the OPD and the car loan, um, but if you were already making your student loan payments, you would have probably a category to put this in. I am just going to um, make a new category, and this will go under debt payments, and hit next. So now it'll say we're going to move your account history to the new account and close your existing account. Go ahead and hit next and hit done. So now you're going to notice that student loan account that was under tracking is gone. If I go down to closed, it's going to show up here, student loan original with a balance of zero. YNAB will have already zeroed this out. See, closed account, manual adjustment, 11400 um, If this isn't zero, this will affect your net worth um, uh, reports. So if I come into reports and go to net worth, you'll see here 
and my net worth is 15,660 in the negative. If YNAB didn't make this manual adjustment here, um, so like if, if you see a closed account with a balance owing, if I come back to reports, I'm minus 27,000, but it's already counting it in here as well. So you don't want YNAB to count this twice. This balance should be zero. Okay, if it's not, you can go ahead and do a manual adjustment. You would just go into reconcile um, and put in zero and let YNAB zero it out on the closed account. So now when you come into your student loan account, you get this new screen. So payments right now, there are no payments for this month um, because we haven't put anything through, but we will, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. Um, under the original tracking history, if you wanna see what it is, it'll say go to tracking account, and you can go back to the account and it'll show you your previous history. Now, if for some reason um, you closed an account you, d you did this loan conversion and you decided it's not going to work for you, you can come back down to the closed account and hit the edit button and you can go reopen and then erase and reopen um, and then you would delete this category up here, right? Because now that student loan is going to be back in your account um, and you would want to make sure that you delete this adjustment category, right? Because you want it to reflect properly and then you would go back and you would delete this one just like that okay so that's how to un undo this and reopen an account that you've closed I'm going to go back and change this over back to a loan account um, and if you guys still have questions about this please just shoot me a DM on Instagram I know I'm going a little bit fast here see so that uh, debt, that student loan payment category is already there now so I can just select it as an existing one um, hit done and then again you can see that it's closed and zeroed out okay so back to this screen so uh, monthly payments so $200 is our minimum payment for this loan account we're gonna pay $1,600 of interest over the term like the life of this loan um, and it's gonna take us five years to pay it off making our monthly payment so you can adjust this payment like let's say you could afford an extra $50 a month so you're gonna pay 250 a month now YNAB will tell you you're gonna save a year and three months your new payoff date is February 26th or 2026, whereas the original payoff was May 2027. Um, and you're going to save $372 in interest, paying an extra $50 a month. Um, your other option is if you want to adjust just your payoff date. So let's say you're like, no, I want to go hard. I want to pay this off by the end of next year. So it's just November 2021 right now. So let's say by December 2022, you want to pay it off. So YNAB will tell you um, if you want to pay it off by then, this is what your new monthly payment's going to be. You're going to have to pay an extra $702 every single month, which is like a wild amount of money. Um, but you can do that too. If you adjust this date, YNAB will automatically adjust everything else for you and tell you how much more you need to pay to your loan in order to pay it off. Finally, the last option that you have is a one-time extra. So let's say um, you know you sold a bunch of stuff or something and you, you came in with some extra cash. You can say, okay, I've got an extra you know, $500 to put down towards this loan. Um, if we pay an extra $500 this month, we're going to save $152 in interest and we're going to pay it off four months sooner. So that is how this screen works. Now in your budget, if you come down and click on it, you get kind of the same screen here. It'll tell you how much you have outstanding, what your interest rate is, and how much you've paid. And you can still create a, a debt payment target. So. The downside to this is that currently YNAB only lets you do a monthly payment for um, these loan accounts. So if you pay, um, you know, bi-weekly or something like that, what you would have to do then is you would want to take your bi-weekly payment and multiply it by 26 and then divide that number by 12. And so the reason why you're doing that is because if you pay bi-weekly, you're going to make a total of 26 payments throughout the year. Um, but then divide it by 12 to get your average monthly spending, and that's how much you would budget for every month. And then when you have that month with the extra payment in it, you would already have that money, that extra money set aside for it. Um, because yeah, as of right now, the only way you can do this is with a monthly payment. Uh, same thing with if you pay weekly, you would take your weekly payment and multiply it by 52 and then divide by 12. Because again, if there's a month with an extra week in it, you would need more money that month, so you wanna take your average. 
Um, so YNAB is going to pull here and say, okay, your minimum monthly payment based on what you told us is $200 to pay every month. Again, if you want to increase this, you can set a higher number if you want. We can say we want to pay $300 a month. And same thing, YNAB will adjust it and say, cool, if you do $300 a month, you're going to pay it off two years sooner. Um, for the sake of this video, we'll just leave it as the 200 and we'll go ahead and save target. So that gives us a target or a goal to work around, to work towards every month. So now how are we going to enter payments for these categories? Because this is, this is going to look different. Um, so we're going to go into accounts, add a transaction. We'll say we made the payment today. This is going to come from my checking account um, too. So now you're going to see here um, under payees, it says payment student loan. Um, so previously it would have been like an actual pay. It might have been a bank or um, whoever you had your loan through. Now it's going to be a transfer, a payment to the student loan. And if you do this on mobile, it's going to be different. Um, and I will show you guys that in a second here. Um, so I don't actually have money in this account like set aside for this category because I'm just using my, my personal account and I don't actually have a student loan. But again, I wanted to show you guys how this would work. So we're gonna go ahead and put in the payment and hit save, okay? And now if I come down to the student loan, you'll notice that the balance here has changed. And um, here it says that we've made a payment of $200 on November 2nd, and this is how much interest we paid. Um, and then just out of curiosity, because this I have not done before, what if we add a transaction from November or October, the previous month? Where does our transaction history show us? Payments in November. Yep, yeah, okay, cool. So your account history will um, here, yeah, it'll, it'll give me an error because I'm entering transactions before the start date, but uh, it, your previous transactions will show up in account history and then anything out of your tracking account would show up in the tracking account. So YNAB will break it out for you. And then up here would show you just your current um, payments for that month. So if we put in another payment for November to the student loan, and let's say we did like an extra $100, we hit save. Again, our balance gets adjusted and it shows us what payments we made and from what accounts. So that is how the tracking account works on the computer. Um, and now I'm just going to go back and undo everything that I've done. Because again, I don't have a student loan account. And so I don't want this in my actual budget. I'm going to go through and show you how to do this on your phone because your phone, it's going to look different as well. Okay, so now we are on the phone app in YNAB and I'm going to show you guys how to do the same thing on here. So we're going to come over to accounts. Now on the mobile app, you cannot convert an existing tracking account to a loan account. You would have had to have already set it up on the computer. Um, if you had a tracking account, you would have had to already converted it to a loan account on the desktop, um, or you can add in a new account. So we're going to add in an account and we're going to put it in as a, uh, under mortgage and loans, we'll say student loan. We're going to call it student loan. Um, we'll say that the account balance again is twelve thousand dollars. Interest rate we'll say is five, and our monthly payment is two hundred. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hit uh, student loans. Uh, okay, hit next. So we are going to again. You would select a category. So I will select student loan because that's where the payment would come out of, and hit done. So now under tracking. Again, it's not there because it shows up under loan. So student loans, you'll see it um, showing up under there. And again, if we click on it, you get a lot less information in the mobile app um, than you do on the desktop. You don't get any of the cool calculators or nothing. Boo earns. <laughs> um, but we are going to talk about how to enter in a transaction. Okay, so we're gonna add in a transaction as if we were making a payment to the student loan account. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the plus transaction here at the bottom. Um, the account, obviously it's not gonna come out of student loans, it would come out of a checking account. So I'm just gonna hit my account here. We'll say we put $200 towards the loan. And if we search for student loan now, you'll see it's a transfer. Now this is, again, like I said, a little different from the desktop because on the desktop web app, it says payment student loans. On the app, it says transfer student loans. I'm not sure why they're making that um, 
difference because uh, really it's the same thing. So again, you're going to select your payment category. In this case, it would come out of a student loan payment category that I had created, and we will hit Save Transaction. So that $200 comes out of my bank account. Why not flashes me a red line saying, hey, you didn't budget for this. You would be correct because I don't have student loans, but um, we're going to go with it. And so now under loans, student loans, you'll see that it's changed. Now we have $11,850 owing. Um, and YNAB has automatically calculated the interest. So even though we made a payment of $200, our principal only reduces by $150 because $50 went to interest. Um, so this is a nice feature because previously in your tracking accounts, you would have to manually calculate out your interest um, and manually enter your transactions. So this is how this works on the uh, phone app. Again, you get way more information inside of um, the web app and a lot less on the phone. Like even if we come over here, again, you don't see any of the calculator loan payment information. It is only on the web app. I don't know if they'll be adding that at any point, but at the very least, just having YNAB automatically calculate our interest is a nice feature. So um, that is what I've got for you guys today. Again, it's a new feature. I don't think YNAB has put out their official video yet um, on how it works. I would assume that at some point they will. Uh, but if you have any questions, again, please follow us on Instagram. It's linked down in the description box. And if you have questions, just shoot me a DM and I am happy to try and answer the best that I can. I hope you all are having a fantastic week and we will see you in the next video. Bye.